Hey, you there. Thank you for watching. And welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today, I have a 3v3 ladder match here on the most amazing Naraxxus map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with the red team, also known as team number one in the northeast. Ending with blue team, also known as team two in the southwest. Starting off with team one's orange, the color orange player, we have Bredegis of Opokan. He is a seraphim for this match as 14-16 rating. And there's probably going to be a lot of reclaim on the map with this many rocks around our players. To the northwest, we have Freshie as a Cybran and Ruby Red as a 1592 rated player. He is barely beat for the highest rated player overall, but he is the highest rated player on Team 1. And next door to him in the regular slot position, most likely, is M. Rumbash. Probably going to call him Rumbash for short. He is a Seraphim. He is a 1503 rating. So for Team two, sorry, Team one side of the map or the red team, we have a Cybran and two Seraphims. No UEF and no Aeon for Team 1. Starting off with the back line, Rigo for Team 2 or full boot team. We have Shame Phoenix as a Cybran, as a 1563 rated in Royal Blue. To his East, the player who is the highest rated overall, barely being Freshie on Team 1 for the highest rated player overall. It is Sailor Moon, 1595 rating. So three point difference in that rating score. He is in Stitch Blue. And he is a UEF. And last but not least, for Team 1 in the Northwest, we have a Seraphim. It is Itch. Is it Itch Salter? I always want to say something else, but I'll probably just call him Salter for short. He is a Seraphim. He is a 1595 rated player. And again, he is an Amethyst Purple. So for Team 1 side of the map, they are lacking the Aeon faction. And they have one of each of the remaining. So one Cybran, one UEF, and one Seraphim. Which means for the entirety of the match, there are no Aeon players. Apologies to those loyal to the Princess. Hopefully you will enjoy the game nonetheless. And as a reminder, Team 1 also lacks the UEF faction. And for these six players on the map, we've already seen a decent amount of rocks. Let's see how much reclaim they have to scoop up. Currently sitting at, I'm just going to take a guess, 70,000 mass. 123,000 mass. <laughs> A little off there by almost double, or half, I should say, whatever you want to calculate that. That is 20,000 plus mass per player. That is a metric ton of mass for our players to grab. And, I mean, understatement, it is everywhere besides the corners. Even the corners, I will admit, have about 3,000 or so almost. I mean, it is everywhere, and we see, you know, a nice little 5,000, 5,000 here action going down in the middle. I kind of want to get a nice little side angle on all of the nonsense. Of course, it wasn't the 400,000 that we've seen in that one game that I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. But this is a lot of mass to scoop up, and it's going to be very, very crazy very quickly lots of nonsense lots of chaos here and in terms of the mechs count well that is the one thing that this uh set of players will be wishing for more is more mexes there are a couple of mexes kind of dotted in the middle and a couple of mexes on the shoreline here there is one mex on each of the islands but besides that, there's really not a lot. So our players are going to be fighting over reclaim and fighting over mexes. So there will be every single mex on the map claimed, I would presume. And they are going to be hard fought and pressed to uh, give anything over. Just like, oh, you can have that mex. It's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. No, every mex is worth its weight in gold at this point. We have a couple of moles outbound providing some nice intelligence for Team 1's Freshie to move in and go after Salter's position over here. I don't know if Salter notices this. He doesn't see anything. He does see a couple of units inbound. He'll send a scout out to see what's going on, get some radar signatures. He's not going to like what's inbound. Nice little couple of mantis running around. And they're going to start uh, snipping away at those expansionary engineers. And that's going to really force Salta to split focus from here and here, kind of going back and forth between his front line and his base. We do see that Sailor Moon's coming in to assist as well to help push back. Better G Sofopokan, or BSP for short, or Better G for short. First come on come action will occur between these two Seraphim players. Neither, of course, have a faction advantage or a upgrade advantage or even veterancy advantage. It is just the same bog standard right off the assembly line at Commanders. We do see that Shame Phoenix is coming in to assist. And all of these mantis are going after these P-Gens, slowing the expansionary efforts of 
Salter's power grid. We see he's doing perfectly fine on power and en uh, not energy, but uh, mass is, of course, perfectly fine because of all the reclaim around. But he is going to lose a couple of outlying mexes. He's getting a lot of spam facilities online. He's scaling his uh, T2 mexes as well. That is going to be, of course, the thing for all of these players is because of the limitation on the number of mexes, upgrades need to happen sooner rather than later. You need to scale, 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 scale. We even see outbound from Sailor Moon. He's already working on all of those upgrades immediately. I feel like with all those mexes, oh, no, he's not, he's not down on power, so maybe uh, something else is going on. Maybe he doesn't have as many engineers reclaiming is probably what the case is. But it looks like Team 1 has now, sorry, Team 2 has shoved away Team 1's attack and all these forces now coming to converge on this location over here. The benefit and curse with this map as well is there are a decent amount of choke points. This is just not great for any sort of T3 movement. There's a little bit of a nice little kill box right here. It's going to be very tight quarters on the land. And Navy does look like there's starting to be a little bit of an appearance. But again, the issue with Navy in this map is yeah, you can grab the southeast and the northwest. There might be a little bit of concern, of course, with some cruiser missile nonsense here for that'd be Team 2's uh, Salter. But, I mean, anything down here, you'd have to get battleships to really affect anything in the back line. And even then, you're probably just scratching the exterior defenses at that point. So Navy's going to be more of a deterrence against any sort of kind of run by or flybys with some air across the edges of the map that's probably going to be the main use of it for this match maybe we'll see a big boat small pond but i don't really think that's going to happen in this game we do see t2 on the uh, done here for stay in the moon and salter going for gun and nano already finished gun going for nano now team one's better to gun for t2 and no upgrades as of yet for anybody else on team one so it's going to be just fire base warriors over here. Gun has been started for Sailor Moon. Some more of a defense offense kind of jack of all trades situation here. We even see the calm of Shame Phoenix over here to the west to ensure that there are no run buys. I do love that uh, teamwork there, making sure that there's no issues. And of course, he's not altruistic, as, uh, not completely altruistic as well, because he is going for some rocks over here as well. And there's still a decent chunk of mass on the map. We started with 120,000. We're down to 60, so half. Over half, I should say, has already been reclaimed. And Team 1 has grabbed both of the corners. But again, like I was saying earlier, there's really not any... I mean, there's a benefit. There's a mechs there. But there's not a huge benefit as there is in focusing a little bit more down the middle. We do see units trying to push back at Team 1's expansionary efforts. But unfortunately, it's just kind of a net zero for either of these players. There is a little bit more reclaim, of course, to be had with all these dead units. But it's going to be a little bit more of a kind of slowdown here. It was very quick to get things going. It's going to slow down a little bit as players scale their ecos even more. Team 1 sitting at 190. Team 2 was at like 500 or so, but that's probably reclaim later. They're sitting about 230, 240 now. T3 air online for Team 2. T3 air online for Team 1. And air grid already being expanded upon. And we have some quantum gateways going to be gated in here soon. Maybe he'll go for the engineering presets. Definitely would probably be beneficial to get a uh, engineer from Freshy to get the RAS uh, SACU because, of course, the uh, Seraphim don't have RAS, which is why when I cast Phantom matches, when they're gifted over, every single SACU has the highlight mod, which makes it very hard to track Seraphim. Tom's very, very annoying. Salta pushing in with his commander, Nano and Gun. T2 units on the front line here now for Freshy. In the southeast, it's just one comm and a PD for Team 2 Sailor Moon and a shield PD missile launcher going after that. <laughs> That's a little overkill, I feel like. And now the comm of Sailor Moon is being bombarded, getting some TMD online to try to protect against that missile. But unfortunately, I feel like once that missile is done loading, it's going to fire on that commander. He's going to fall back and he's going to put... Uh, a little bit of distance between himself and that front line position. But we see Salter creating a nice little exclusion zone, a nice little buffer here for his teammate of Shane Phoenix to scoop all of this reclaim up. That's the main focus here, at least on this northwestern side, is keeping Team 1 back from all of the reclaim. There's still reclaim everywhere to be had still, but a chunk of it is being denied, specifically being the fact that that is halfway across the middle. Not halfway across the middle, it is past the halfway mark. We do see T2 Seraphim technology in the Navy. 
and he's going for the cruisers. I would surmise. Do I see the little dot? Yes, I see the little dot. So there it is. There's the little launcher on the back. So he's going for the cruiser first. Again, probably won't give him a lot of benefits. He'll probably be able to take out that radar system and maybe go after a mix, maybe two. But that's about it. A couple of Zui floating across the map down in the south. If Team 2 is paying attention, they'll see that. Huge land army conversing on Salter's commander. He has to be very careful and start retreating. It's not going to be good for him. Already at three-star efficiency here. Not even 13 minutes on the clock. And Salter is just being bombarded. But again, with that nanocom nonsense of the Seraphim faction, he is repping up hit points exponentially. Not necessarily exponentially quickly, but decently quickly. We do see that Fresh is nearby with a stealth and gun upgrade as well. Unfortunately, he doesn't have nano yet because it takes two upgrades to get to that. This is what he can see, and of course, this is what Saltus can see. He can't see the comm, but look at that. He's just sitting there getting veterancy, getting reclaims, not reclaim, getting uh, regen, and he's still in the green. He got bombarded by Fresh's commander. Now he finally drops into the yellow. He's just like, no, I'm not going to die. No, mm -mm, uh-uh. I am going nowhere. If you saw the match yesterday, I believe, uh, that was one of the complaints of the opposite team of the, the comm that's in the uh, thumbnail. Of, he just, he will not die. <laughs> just die is uh, what he says in the chat, but that's what I put as the thumbnail. I thought it was pretty funny. Anyway, in the Northwest, more engineers on the front line for Freshy getting, of course, more, more, more reclaim. Team 2 now at 400 mass per second. Team 1 at 300, trailing 100 mass per second. Maybe that'll cause some issues. Maybe it won't. T3 Othams dropped off here by that transport, causing some havoc back here Here for Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon has to divert a decent amount of forces to deal with that. Has some gunships online and bomber assistance. Uh, actually, it's bombers online, gunship assistance. There we go. I phrased it correctly that time. We do see that these comms are not giving up. Doesn't look like the comms for Team 1 are pressing as much as Team 2 is on, we even see that Better J has actually retreated for the time being. But both of these commanders for Team 1's red team, they're not moving very much. They're just staying, hanging out, and uh, not letting Team 2 pass. Gun Splash coming online here for Salta. We don't see that upgrade as much, but with so many T1 units, T2s, and now some T3s, and they're densely packed, that Splash, that AoE is going to help considerably. We do see another poking here of this firebase here from Sailor Moon. It's going to be a little bit of a hill to climb, but not too much. It is eventually going to wither away just because uh, Better G's comm is not there to assist it. But that uh, Otham is being taken out. Mix is offline. The radar is offline. That's going to hurt. There's an Omni back there. This map isn't terribly big. It's not a full 20 by 20, so they can see almost the entire map. Just with that radar system there, they can't see the back of Team 1's lineup, but at least they can see the majority of it. Speaking of the back, air grid being expanded upon. Would love to see a shield. Looks like there's... No, there's going to be an SMB there. Kind of tricked me there. Quantum Gateway Online. Yes, he is going for the engineering preset. T3 land, T3 land. No T3 air as of yet for the other players on Team 1, Team 2. Any other T3 air? No, not even T3 land as of yet. Will be T3 land here shortly. But again, Osalto has been focusing on his commander for the most part. That's not necessarily focusing on the units. And you can see that reflected so many units for Freshy. Not that many units for Salter. Gunships are inbound. 1 T3, 1 T2. So a little bit of AA on that one to assist with any sort of ASF incursions. And there are more ASFs for Team 1's air player. I'd say probably about a half dozen or so, roughly. Looks like this uh, firebase, again, slowly being willed away. The shields, a little bit more of an annoyance to deal with. And the attack on Salt's command, uh, sorry, Calm, does commence once again. There are some loyalists. There are now some bricks online. Again, he's going for that splash upgrade. He's receiving a lot of damage here. He's starting those more, sorry, that you know, faster rate units. And he has to cancel the upgrade. He was almost done with it, but he's going to die from this. Maybe, possibly. He needs to keep walking back. That is a dead calm. And he just got blitzed down. As one way to deal with a Seraphim na Nano Commander, if I can speak correctly. And that is just blitz that calm down. Team 2 loses the first player of the game at 18 minutes. And that is now a net positive for Team 1 at a 3v2 lead. 
We do see the cruisers are starting to play a factor here in Sailor Moon Space. It does have some TMD online. Needs to get more of it online. Those skills are not great, so needs to essentially get pretty much two for every one that he probably should build. Maybe one and a half for every one that he would normally build if he was a different faction. I think one and a half is definitely a good ratio. Two, one in on Shame Phoenix retreating. No upgrades on board that commander. Bricks are inbound. Missile launches are inbound. There is no hope of getting a rapid defense line deployed. So he's going to have to retreat and lose a ton of territory in the middle. Again, that mech count coming into play. Team 2's eco, though, 567. Team 1, 430. They are starting to catch up a little bit with some power reserves probably coming back into play. Monkey's being spammed up here as we speak for Shane Phoenix. Fat Boy about to be started here for Sailor Moon. And now we see the Percy's are on the front line for Sailor Moon coming in to assist with these brick threats. And that is going to help keep Team 1 back considerably. But Sailor Moon is retreating. He doesn't want a treatment of what happened to uh, his teammate of Salter. So he's going to retreat for the time being. Definitely the smart play there. Some of those uh, cruiser missiles are actually striking the mountain or cliff. No, nah, it's not a cliff. It's more of a mountain. Whatever you want to call this little conglomeration of mountains. So a little bit of uh, some backing off. Not backing off, but some assistance from some environment there. But again... Team 1 has the Navy. Team 1 lost the facility over here that uh, gunship came in. Looks like I missed the air fight. Apologies for that. Looks like Team 2 won it. And there are definitely more gunships now online. They're going to start poking and prying. It looks like another air fight is just going to happen anyways. ASF fight will be heavily in favor of Team 2. More ASFs wiped out there. And it looks like the turns wasn't super great, but it was enough to get away at least most of those ASF. And look at this. Now the unit's shifting northward. Going to try to hook around this little mountain range here. Doesn't look like they'll get much territory out of that. There's some interceptors flying around. And they're, they're there. They're just cannon fodder at this point. Stealth coming online here for Shane Phoenix. Probably will go for Nano next and then Gun. Or it'll probably be Stealth, na stealth Gun, then Nano. Possibly. I don't know what he's thinking about it. Team 2, though, completely getting crushed by Eco now. 680 for Team 1, 520 for Team 2. Is that power related? No, that is that is straight just eco. There are SACUs running around, engineering presets, getting some AA online to defend against the ASFs and gunships from Team 2. And that is mainly being driven by essentially everybody on Team 1 having over 200 mass. We have Shame Phoenix at 344 and Sailor Moon at 176. Gunships inbound dealing with this attack force. Not really going to get much value out of that, unfortunately. Looks like most of the reclaim from the rocks is gone. I would expect all of it at this point to be gone. 30,000 still sits on the map. Most of it on Team 2's side of the map just due to, of course, dead units and the like. And Team 2 needs to get the eco back going. 700 for Team 1. That thing is just skyrocketing right now. And I surmise that there might be a nuke, artillery, game enders, something in this ladder match with that much mass. James Phoenix built an experimental. That would be the monkey. Yep, the monkey is done going for crab immediately. And now Fat Boy is almost in the green. Laser has been started for Shane Phoenix. He went for nano, then laser. Very interesting. Probably going to go for cloaking next. Does he even have the power for that? Oh, just barely. He almost loses all of it, at least in his bar. But he's going back to positive, so trying to balance that on the fly. That was not the right button to press. There we go. 22 minutes on the clock here. Team 1 sitting at... Whoa, there went that mass drop. Is that... That's probably power-related from better... Oh! Ooh, that is a definite drop in production of mass. But anyway, Team 1 sitting at three players left. Team 2 sitting at two players left. The only departure, of course, being Salter. That was credited to, I think it was Freshy, with those bricks into the units just charging against that commander. Team 1, map control, a little bit more than 50%, especially when you consider the southeastern corner of the map that's kind of there. We also see, of course, the northwest corner with that one mix not even being occupied by anybody at this point. And then the eco situation, like I pointed out, Team 1, that's definitely just a temporary thing being that low. And then Team 2 is at 550 as well. So ecos are definitely fluid in this game for now, but it looks like for the most part, things are starting to refix themselves. Yeah, starting to fix themselves a little bit. 
Here for Betterji, so that would be a bump in hour, which means that's a bump in mass, and that is definitely shown there. Had to make so much AA, says Freshy. And yeah, definitely due to the fact that uh, Team 1, of course, doesn't have air control. There are some Othams inbound, which definitely don't help that situation, and more Team 1 PD being spammed up to defend against those Othams. Maybe a T3 Max will come offline. Maybe a second one will. He's going to build some more mass fabricators. And I'm assuming he's going to build more PD because of this incursion. In the northeast, we have tons of these SSU preset commanders running around. The engineer ones scaling up the build power here for Rumbash. He'll have to uh, spend that mass somehow, and that's how he's going to spend his mass for now. He's also negative right now, so he is spending it as much as he can. We do see that a chicken has been started for better G, so one experimental currently on the cards for Team 1. Team 2 already has an experimental, and I think the second one is about to finish. Yep, that fat boy is almost done and the third one is a uh, it's getting pretty close to the yellow but still taking a little bit to get there team two of course is in the lead for the asf count i'll do a count right now just so i can uh, illustrate that looks like a couple of different interceptors are bingo on fuel but 14 whalers and 86 gun sorry gunships 86 asfs team one's freshly sitting at i'd say 50 that's oh i wrong wrong play i was like it the control a isn't working but 60 or so, so not a huge advantage, still an advantage for Team 2. The biggest part of that, of course, is the gunship threat because they have a decent AA on board. Not as good as the Restorers, of course, but they are decent, of course. Nah, oh, that Omni is going to go down. That SSU is going to go down. That's not going to feel good. There goes that Omni. Team 1 will lose a huge, huge radar system there. That was in the middle of the map, pretty much shown the entire middle with the Omni and, of course, the entire map in it, its, its entirety. I think saying entirety twice is kind of redundant because it is redundant. But Monkey getting a lot of value out of it. 16,000 mass kill. Going to kill some more T2 mexes off. Lots of tickle cannons over here to the north. Going to kind of not necessarily delay but kind of deter him from going that way. Chicken is in the yellow. About to take over into the green so that needs to build sooner rather than later. There is a Monkey being built by Freshy now and it's going up actually pretty quickly I might add. Say about a couple thousand oh, I'd say about Almost 500 or so hit points per second, roughly. I'm trying to do rough math in my head, of course. Sim speed and replay speed and all that kind of a little bit different for our players to experience because just because a game is whatever X amount of time on the replay doesn't exactly mean that that was how long the game actually played for because of slowdown and whatnot. Monkey ripping apart some bricks is in the yellow, of course. Wants to stay a little bit away from those bricks. Lots of Othams. Decent amount of whalers nearby. Betterji builds an experimental. There's that chicken. Looks like the ASF are gearing up for it, and it's salt possibly way that whalers fall back for some reason. Oh, I guess they don't want to get sniped by the ASF. That's probably fair. That would be a good move there. Monkey doing as much damage as it can. Gets to three star veterancy. We're getting 10% more hit points per veterancy. So that is 30% extra. Laser is done. Starting gun. That should finish very quickly. 270 seconds. So five and a half minutes here for that upgrade if I can do. No, sorry, four and a half minutes, four and a half minutes. Because five minutes would be 300 seconds, so four and a half minutes. I was thinking six minutes, I think, initially. But anyway. You both did everything wrong, says Bergy. You alone. I Again, there's conversations in chat about one thing or the other. They're complaining about land right now, but... I mean, they've done a very good job of holding up with what they had. Chicken is online. It's going to intercept the monkey. And that chicken's going to kill that monkey with the assistance of the other T3 units. Monkey is online. SSU is being delivered to the front line. Air grid heavily expanded upon. And now more air grid is going to be built. So love the secondary and tertiary air grids. Actually, that's primary. That's tertiary. That's just there. And in the base here for Team 2, we have just a bunch of power and, a and ASF producing facilities and gunships as well. Cloaking has been started for shame. So if he gets in range of an Omni, that's not going to go well. That would probably be the Omni that Team 1 will upgrade to. If not, there might be one over here. Looks like there's going to be a nuke started here for Better G. 27 minutes. He wants to end the game sooner rather than later. Monkey v. Monkey fight. Chicken with it. Oh, the chicken's back here. The laser's not focusing on the monkey. Huge disappointment there for that monkey. And that's going to be an easy win for Team 1. Just spam experimental sets Freshy. Chicken going to chase this fatty. There are Percy's firing at these bricks. 
Percy's doing a lot of damage to those bricks. Trying to keep them at bay as much as possible. Team 2 definitely needs another experimental nuke. 50% says Salter. And yes, that nuke is uh, almost done being constructed, but not loaded. The fat point needs to move or it's dead. It's going to die anyways at this point. Shield is down. And that fat boy is dead. Oh, very unfortunate. Team 2 loses both of their experimentals in the middle. Crab is almost done, so that'll help. Another fat boy on the way. And now counter nukes coming online here for Sailor Moon. So nukeage and more nukeage here for both of these players. And those uh, monkeys are continuing to press with the chicken assistance as well. We do see the chicken is in the red. Don't know if it should push any farther. There are some ravagers being built. They can target the chicken once it comes into range and not necessarily one tap it, but almost one tap it at this point. Of course, the Ravagers are going to switch targets to that chicken. Transport's inbound just acting as some cover for something, but there's nothing on board, so that's kind of a mistake there. Whalers will come in, take out the rest of the monkey's HP with the with Ravager assistance. Whalers will take out the chicken before it gets to the fire base there. All the PD are down. ASF fight over top of this land engagement. And it's going to be hard to tell who wins that fight. There are, of course, some whalers that will add some numbers to Team 2. And it looks like Team 2 will sweep air control right now. There will be heavy losses on both sides, of course. But more losses and percentages for Team 1 than for Team 2. And there go the ASFs. Oh, there's a transport with an SSU on board. Oh, it drops. And, of course, now it's just going to be about reclaim, reclaim, reclaim. So Team 1 takes out a monkey and a fat boy. Team 2 takes out a host of ASFs for both teams. And currently on the map, reclaim totals back to 130,000. Love to see those numbers skyrocket. Look at that. Just two nice wrecks right there in front of Sailor Moon to scoop up and the forces for Shane Phoenix to guard. Shane Phoenix is calm, is done. The cloaking is online. The gun is done. The laser is done. He's emanating that uh, nice little stealth field. And, of course, the cloaking over all the nonsense. It kind of looks like weird... Uh, you not UV, uh, like a cat. It's not a, is a cat scan. What's the what's the donut? Now is that MRI? I always forget the difference between the two. I think it's an MRI. Is it MRI when you go in the donut? You can't. I can't remember. Anyway, you can like see his skeleton essentially and whatnot. I like it. Anyway, SAC is running around for engineering presets here for Team One. We do see the combo Freshy has retreated to the back of Team 1's main bases, and that's definitely a smart move, especially if Team 2 comes in with land. He could easily get swarmed. How is the nuke loading? Nuke is almost ready to go. Team 2, have you prepped SMD defense? No. It's built, but not loaded. Nuke has been ignored. Definitely don't blame you. There. SMD is loaded. SMD is not loaded, just built. So that base is in a very, very not good, not good position. And I'm assuming it will either go for the base here for Shame or the base here for Sailor Moon, but not his air grid, of course. Whaler's trying to get out of dodge. They take out an SACU and call it a day. They don't produce a lot of mass per second. I mean, it's three, so it's not bad. They're mainly designed for the build power. May mostly nothing else than that. We do see that, of course, the naval facility that hasn't really done a whole lot is now under threat. There is a cruiser in the water. That's not going to do a whole lot. Actually, this two of them it looks like. Yeah, there's two of them right there. Those are going to get taken out very quickly. N still really nothing down there. Zooey's just being spammed out. Looks like it's very slowly nothing really too crazy in that regard. Nuke is outbound. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it's going for this base. Good choice there. Because there is no SMD there or I should say there is an SMD there. It's just not loaded. Those engineers are dead. This base is gone. That's going to hurt Team 2's eco, specifically because they're still training in the mass department. Great, great grab here by Team 1's Redergy to Vopokan. This SMD was almost loaded, so if it was launched at Sailor Moon's base, it would have been closed, but definitely would have been shot down. Here comes the nuke, and of course, here comes the announcer saying what everybody loves to hear. Kaboom! It is all gone. Let's guess 50,000 mass worth of stuff destroyed. 63,000 mass. Always either underestimating or overestimating. A great grab there. It takes out five core mass. All of the everything is gone. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit of a, tr a trek for these engineers to rebuild everything. It's going to be a little bit. And, of course, Team 2 suffers. Goes back to 500 mass income there. And of course, Team 2 is producing their own nuke, which is now built. Not loaded, but is built. SMD is loaded. SMD is loaded. 
Looks like uh, engineers being picked up to uh, go to the front line, it looks like. Is looks like they're going for reclaim. Crab going after this crab. Whaler's going after that uh, crab, but it looks like they're being shooed away by AA support. There's a lot of T3 AA sites as well as these bouncers. So they're going to start shooing them away slowly. And engineers just being dropped off to scoop up, reclaim, scoop up, reclaim, scoop up, reclaim. It's just aggressive reclaim at this point. 33 minutes on the clock here. And at this point, I mean, there is a Soul Ripper, not my favorite air unit at all. My favorite go uh, the fa the <laughs> preferred goes the Awasa Bomber, and then the Donut, and then the Bug. And the Bug is just way down there in the list. It's essentially like number six or whatever. <laughs> like there's a couple land experimentals in the air, <laughs> the air department kind of thing. Just I don't I don't like the Bug. I just don't like it. I don't know if it's just because I don't think it's that useful. I don't know what it is, but if for some reason, it's like, I don't like it. A couple of whalers get caught out. Another air fight occurs. Not that many whalers here for Team 2, but uh, it looks like Team 1 might have the number. Uh, we can check really quickly. Rumbash has 130. Shane Phoenix has 100. And he has one bug and another one being built as we speak. He's going for all bug. He doesn't have air control. It's essentially in Team 1's favor. And that Whaler gets caught and dies. Crab running around here going for just pushing in. This Crab going back. We have some nice little Authams in the middle securing more of the reclaim. So that's how Team 2 is pretty much staying afloat in this game is the reclaim. Team 1 still in the lead, though. For total mass accrued, 1.1 million and 200,000 reclaimed. And 128 for Team 2. And, of course, total mass, uh, sorry, total mass being generated per second, 830 versus 600. Bug over here maybe offering as a nice little sacrificial lamb to kill the ASFs from Team 1. I would presume the ASFs they're building. Looks like they're going to go for it. Looks like Team 1's Rumbash is going to fall for the trap. The ASFs need to be pulled in immediately. That's an instantly dead bug. Oh, they were way too late. Very unfortunate. The ASF had it been just like five or ten seconds sooner. Definitely, definitely unfortunate. Of course, Team 2 could possibly reclaim that really easily, but just very different. Make Hive is triple this size air grid. And it's just talking about make air, make air, make air. Here's that nuke loading. Is it being focused down? Once again, looks like it's most of the way loaded to another nuke. Team 2 has your nuke loaded. No, not even going much for it. Another SMD going to be loaded here. Another SMD is built there. Another SMD is built there. Oh, that's the regular one. That one's built there. That one's half loaded. They're trying to, again, get some overlapping coverage. Let's see it. Crab is down in the middle due to a couple of those Othams and the other Crab from Team 2. Land side of things not going well. Is there another Crab being built? Yes, there is right here. Crab's almost in the green. And with all of that eco, I mean... It's mostly being spent on the nuke. He's, I mean, what else is he spending it on? He's a little bit negative, so it's pretty well balanced there. That is the wrong team. Nothing in the bar, nothing in the bar. So you're, they're spending all the mass. I just don't know what they're using it for. A couple of shields. Love to see that. Protecting the SMD. Good move there. Of course, they have to get through other SMD coverages, but it is an nice to have backup. I always recommend that. Uh, there's just conversation and chat between Team 1. Artillery has been started for both players on Team 2. Okay. I have a bone to pick right now. <laughs> I mean, it, it isn't just these players. It's a lot of people who do this. It There's one right there. It is not even... It's not even on the other side of the, like, team, the uh, lineup here for Team 2. It is very close. And it does look like uh, Salem Moon's like, oh, yeah, there is a thing right there. But that artillery is almost in the green... Uh, sorry, in the green. In the yellow. Strategic He's going to... <laughs> Another nuke is inbound. It's going to go for this land army. Looks like the crab is going to survive it, but will still take a huge amount of uh, damage to the back. That's not going to feel good when he wakes up in the morning. But again, but like I'm pointing out, two players building essentially the same structure when you can essentially just build it together and then he decides to go for satellite. I mean, that's definitely at least a different play than artillery. Kaboom! Almost kills, sorry, almost kills that megalith, but of course... 
doesn't kill it entirely. This one is going to rampage over that one. That one has to retreat immediately. Oh, eh, it's too late. It's already in range. That is a dead crab. Othams are in the base. PD going to be built. Chicken being spammed up. Artillery started for better G as well, so we didn't see that. Nuke is uh, not loaded. It just fired it and killed off another 15,000 mass. Definitely a good nuke just to kind of deter the invasion down the middle, but of course now it's being shifted his direction. And it's going straight for that nuke launcher. That's the main goal. PD trying to be spammed out as quickly as possible. That's mainly tele-defense. They're trying to get out of range of the PD. T2 air facility. That's going to go down. That would be a huge loss there for him. And it looks like those Othams trying to go for the power. I don't know where they're going now. Lots of uh, T2 gunships being spammed up. Looks like the PD still barely in range. The Othams not going to do that much damage, unfortunately. And it will save the nuke. And Fatboy trying to shoot over that... Uh, that mountain there but it just can't arc its shots up high enough and that artillery is just going to sit there for the time being maybe they'll transition to go to that one next it's just funny how this one has the p-gens built and a shield this one has a shield and the artillery is almost done but no p-gens it's kind of just funny watching that but anyway i just i find it funny especially in games where two players on the same team are building game enders it's like just build one and then go to the other one just I get it. There's a lot going on. Distractions. I get that. But it's just... Uh, ah, it drives me nuts. <laughs> but that satellite's almost done, to be fair, though. So Team 2 will have that. And they'll have some constant vision on Team one side of the map. The chicken is defeated by those Percy's. It will kind of prevent the incursion by the said Percy's. But that's a dead chicken. And it was mainly just built for defense anyways. So Bredigy will be able to reclaim that very easily. And Crab is being forced back by the Fat Boy. Team 1. Lots of ASF. Getting in some SACUs for Eco. Still get. Oh, no, that stopped producing uh, SACUs for now. And nothing too big here from Team 1. Art Artie says uh, Team 1, yep, Artie has been possibly sparted, spotted. Yep, they do spot it by Team 2. Yep, the artillery is now done. The Disruptor T3 heavily artillery installation. And what is the focus? Is it the air grid or is it the nuke? I feel like the immediate threat is the nuke. The long-term threat is definitely the air grid, specifically with Team 1's gunships and all the everything going around. Teleporter has been started by Fresher. We could see Tilma Mazer. Of course, we have half of the Mazer already online, that being Shane Phoenix with the laser already built. He just needs to build the teleporter. But he's not going to go for the teleportation play, which I do agree with right now, because if he dies, then it's only Sailor Moon left, and then it just becomes an assassination game. It kind of still is, to be fair, but it's more of an annihilation at this point than assassination. So he wants to at least maybe kill somebody on Team 1 and then drop it to a 2v2 and then maybe teleport in. But that's going to be one of those plays of we'll just see what uh, Team 2 ends up doing. Looks like the artillery is going to land on those. Ooh, T3 Max is going to get a nice little cascade from those mass fabs. Would have loved to see it go for the nuke first. There's not a lot of nuke coverage over here, but it is very volatile. A couple of uh, mass fabs and PGens next to one another. Another PGen going to get a nice cascade there. And it's going to kill off this P-Gen and then kill off this P-Gen and most will be done with this air grid right there. There goes the explosion over there killing off those m uh, mass fabs. Oh, nice shot. Does the job of the satellite. It's going to kill off that P-Gen and kill off that P-Gen. The one air facility remains. Looks like they're going to shift over to these mass fabs. That would be the best target to go after. Get a nice little explosion going. A nice little cascade. Artillery now landing at that air grid that uh, got demolished. So... They're kind of focusing on, not to say the same target, but almost the same target. Another T3 mix goes offline. Team 2 now 800, Team 1 at 600, but we have some a uh, sorry gunships inbound, not ASFs. ASFs inbound from Team 1. Kill off that little uh, mass fab ring there. Going after some P-Gens for some Cascade. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Oh, it takes out a decent chunk of the P-Gens. I'd say about half of the so of the air grid. Shane Phoenix, how's your power reserves doing? Ooh, not great. Not bad, but not great. Needs to essentially rebuild both of those ones that have wrecks, and that should be fine. Gets his P-Gens fully ringed, though, so that's probably going to help. Yep, that pretty much will help. And then now we have the artillery here from Team 2 Sailor Moon being built. Of course, he probably would have assisted that had that attack not happened, so it's going to take a little bit longer. It looks like we have the artillery from Team 1 almost done. Yep, almost done. Has a stealth field around it as well. I don't think Team 2 noticed it. Oh, no, they didn't notice it. They just know where the nuke is. Satellite over top going after the air grid up here. Looks like Freshy going for still the teleporter, I think. 
because I clicked on other teams, so I don't know what the actual upgrade is, which is a little annoying that that happens, but I get it. It's just a, it's not a bug, it's just a feature. Pigeon going to go down. Shield goes down. That's very not great. That Pigeon goes down. There goes the rest of that Cascade. Ooh, that's got to hurt. That's another air grid down here for a, a Rumbash. Going to try to build some shields to protect that comm. Looks like the satellite probably not going to focus on the comm, focus on the P-Gens. Because if they knock out all the P-Gens, then there's no shields anyways. So kind of a discrep not a discrepancy, but not a great situation there. How's his power reserves? Not great because he's building a laser. How's Rumbash? Uh, not great because he's about to lose some more P-Gens. Once this uh, little grid up here to the north dies out. There are lots of strap bombers, though, built for M, ba uh, M Rumbash. Artillery here for Team 1 is online. And it's going to be fully ringed with uh, T3 Pigeons. Second artillery already almost half done here for Team 2. And this one is almost done here for Sailor Moon. So soon to be three artilleries here for Team 2. That is not going to feel good here for Team 1 once those become operational. Another bug, because why not? The first bug didn't really do anything, so... Just kind of died. It would have been a nice little distraction. Fresh, he takes a shot to the back. Ugh, he's going to teleport. His laser's done. If he dies before the teleport finishes, that'd be very disappointing for him. Oh, laser's being focused on him. He's going to die. He's probably going to have to cancel the teleport. Oh, that's rough. Oh, 600 hit points. I hear Strap Bomber's dropping something. Oh, the comm. 700 hit points. I'm going to keep my cursor on it. Strap Bomber's going in for the artillery or satellite or something but uh, I don't know what the strap bombers went for. It looks like they went for the artillery but there goes Team 1's Freshie due to satellite and artillery bombardment and M. Rumbash got the nuke defense is what he said but there's an SMD over here so yeah they can probably carve out a little bit of Team 2's base but this one protects most of this base anyways for Sailor Moon if edge nuking would probably take, maybe the satellite would be safe. But Imran Bash control case, he sees the end. He could have, uh, it doesn't look like he got killed by P-Gens. That was definitely a, a legit control K. That is now a 1v2 in favor of Team 2 and that kind of 1-2 punch. Nuke is outbound. It's going for the attack. It's not going to land. There's more SMDs here. And unfortunately for Team 1, that satellite is... Uh, Going to, of course, illustrate the team, too, that there is an artillery there. They already knew that there was artillery, just not where it was coming from. Second artillery is done. Third artillery is more than halfway done. Jane Phoenix getting some PD online to protect himself. But both of the... Sorry, the only Siren for Team 1 is knocked out. Doing no teleporting nonsense. That would have been a really good play here from Freshie had he been able to teleport in. The only other issue with that, of course, was he was already severely damaged anyways. So it had to have been one of those moves where he had to kill one or both of the commanders to really make it worth it. At least one. If he got both, that would have been a game-winning move. And MVP in my book, he was able to pull that off. But I think PD was already being built by that point. So there's PD down here as well. They are Team 1s, though. Kind of they were dotted around a little bit. And Team 1s, better G's of Opocon, Control Ks. Whether that's due to P-Gen, possibly. I mean, that's an emitter. And the P-Gen doesn't look like it was down. So, yeah, that was just a straight control K. The, the end was nigh. The artillery was just taken out. And it was essentially just the the beginning of the end once uh, Freshie was taken out. But that is the game here, folks. 45 minutes, 42 seconds on the clock here. Team 2 wins the game due to satellite and artillery bombardment. And MVP for this game, I believe... I think it goes to... Shame Phoenix. I think his transition to T3 artillery was definitely the thing that started to break Team 1. And then the satellite play obviously helped kind of take out all the P-Gens with the artillery. So that was a nice little one-two punch from both of them. And then, of course, the second artillery came in. Was it really that impactful? Eh. The third artillery was almost done. That would have been game ending anyways. Definitely the only not great thing for Shane Phoenix was just that bug dying over there. I don't know if he was distracted, but I get what he was trying to do. Trying to lure out the ASFs from Rumbash and then kill a decent amount of them off with the distraction of the bug, but I just think he was a little bit slow on the draw there and just couldn't make it happen, which I, I get it. I, I appreciate the 
move. I just wasn't ex- executed as well as he probably would have hoped. But again, I don't know. I feel like MVP is definitely kind of conglomeration of these two players. I, I've seen games like these now where like it's really two players that do a lot together that really drive the win. So I'd say like 51% MVP for Shane Phoenix, 49% here for Sailor Moon. But let me know down in the comments who you think MVP should be. Of course, if you haven't done so already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. And I will see all of you in the next one.